Okay, thank you, Alison, and good afternoon to, to everyone. As Alison has indicated, my name is Mark Arrow. Uh, I am the, the, the project manager for the Pacific Awareness and Response to the Cognat Rhinoceros Beetle Project, uh, based here with uh, SPC. Uh, and we, our project uh, currently covers uh, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, uh, and PNG. So I'll just uh, go through and then share some of the, uh, the results of some of the work that we are doing in terms of uh, its uh, containment and management within, within the region. Uh, so Alison, next, next slide. I just wanted to start off the presentation with a uh, brief of the life cycle. Uh, if you look at the life cycle, it's the adult uh, that's responsible for the damage. Naturally, the uh, the uh, the larval stages are natural compose uh, decomposers, so they they uh, they help with the decomposition process. Uh, but it is the the adult uh, that causes the problem, uh, and it also lives much longer than the other stages. So, once you have the other uh, stages that are, that are shorter, uh, you keep adding to the population to to cause the damage to uh, your palms. Uh, next slide. Okay, I just wanted to touch a bit on the haplotypes that we have within the region. Uh, we have two haplotypes, uh, which we distinguish them by CRBG and CRBS. Uh, the CRBG is resistant to the Orictus nudivirus. Uh, that's mainly used as the, the, the classical biological control agent. Uh, so when we initially had the, the initial incation uh, in around 1901 uh, into Samoa and then spreading further on into the region, uh, the virus was, uh, was introduced uh, and then spread within the region uh, following the spread of the, of the beetle uh, and that uh, contained the, the, the beetle. Uh, so that, that's the, the initial incation that we had and that's of the other uh, the other prototype, uh, which we denote by CRBS, uh, that is uh, susceptible to uh, to the virus. Uh, and in terms of the the difference between the, the two uh, morphologically, they, they look the same. So you can't really set them uh, them apart uh, by looking at the external uh, uh, morphological characters. Uh, you have to do a molecular analysis to 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 tell them apart. Uh, and from my experience, uh, because the CRB uh, G is uh, resistant to the virus, uh, that is more destructive than the CRB S. Uh, but we also note that the latter can become a major issue uh, if, uh, if the, the CRB S escapes the virus uh, and then establishes in a, in a new location. Uh, and we've noticed that in, in a couple of uh, uh, sites within the region. Just in terms of the, the distribution, uh, so for, for the region, uh, around about 68% of our islands are now infested with the beetle, uh, either by uh, the CRBG or the S, or both of uh, CRBG and the S. Uh, and only about 36% of our islands uh, are free of the beetle. So our challenge at the moment is to prevent or to, to control and contain the beetle within uh, the islands that have uh, uh, they've infested and to try and prevent them from reaching the, the islands that don't have the beetle. Uh, next slide. Okay, in terms of uh, the, the, the host or the, the, the crops that uh, they attack, uh, the main, main crops that they attack are coconut and the oil palm. Uh, but we've also picked up the beetle from other crops, including the pineapple, uh, and also our, our colleagues up in Hawaii have uh, reported of them damaging uh, other crops, including popo, uh, banana, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, taro as well. So they do attack the, uh, the, the, uh, the other food crops, uh, which is also of a serious uh, food security concern to us. Uh, and uh, also they attack uh, the other ornamental palms uh, and they, they, they do cause serious uh, damage. Uh, 
And just in terms of the importance of the coconut to us uh, in the region, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty much uh, our tree of life. Uh, it supports uh, our income, food security, and it's also part of our coastal landscapes. Uh, in, and uh, we also use the palms for the building materials, our solar items, so uh, it's, it's a, an important crop to us. And uh, also for the region, oil palm is an important cash crop, uh, particularly for PNG uh, uh, and as well as uh, Solomon Islands. So it's, it's a serious concern. Next slide, please. Uh, just in terms of the, the symptoms of the damage, uh, yeah, these are some of the uh, symptoms that you see from uh, to identify the CRB damage. Uh, so the main uh, common one is the, the, the wedging on the, on the leaflets, uh, but you can also have uh, the, the collapse of bronze and then the, uh, the frost that you get from both holes. Uh, as well as uh, balls within the uh, the front uh, the front base, as well as on the palm trunks, uh, and in serious cases, you you end up with the, the palms dying. So these are some of the symptoms. Next slide, please. And just uh, in terms of the examples of some of the serious uh, damage that uh, uh, that uh, CRB has caused to coconuts within the region, uh, these are just some. Uh, images to, to show that, uh, and just a comment to add to that, it can cause the, uh, the collapse to the coconut industry within, yeah, in areas where they, they cause the damage. Okay, just moving on to, uh, in terms of the management options that we are applying, uh, as I think the other presenters have indicated, I think integrated uh, approach to management is, uh, uh, is more uh, in order to be effective. Uh, so we use the sanitation. Sanitation is one of the, the critical uh, the elements of, uh, of management. Uh, and uh, pheromone trapping uh, is used as part of the, uh, of, of the, of, of the management strategies. Uh, we also uh, apply metallurgy, metallurgy and so place. Uh, that's the, that's uh, the one that we, uh, there is a commercial strand available in Malaysia. Uh, so we import that uh, and then uh, and apply that. The pheromone is from Costa Rica. Uh, so we, we also import that. And a lot of awareness goes into uh, the management uh, program. Uh, so we're as much as possible, uh, we'd like the communities to take ownership of the, the management program. Uh, so they can also assist uh, with with, uh, with the, the management of the beetle. Uh, okay, uh, just uh, this crop just quickly shows uh, it's from Vanuatu, uh, but some of the uh, the uh, uh, the management efforts that we have in uh, killing or destroying the the beetles. Uh, so we we are. Uh, killing them in large numbers using those uh, management strategies that we have. Uh, and also uh, there is uh, infection uh, by metrism that we pick up. Uh, the, the image on the, on the left, so uh, uh, the infection within artificial breeding uh, the sites that we construct and apply the metrism. Uh, and the, uh, the photo on the right shows uh, infection that uh, we picked up on adults in the uh, in the wild so that is showing that uh, the, the the beetles themselves are also spreading the metrism uh, in into the wild uh, next slide please uh, the other thing i just wanted to point out is the uh, yes as part of the internal quarantine program uh, that's sort of worked well for uh, for Vanuatu, uh, we, it was with some resistance, uh, but it did work well uh, for them to contain uh, the beetle. Uh, and that was the, the vessel inspection program uh, where uh, they had a ministerial order that was issued uh, for them to restrict the, the vessels uh, to, to move out of uh, the island of infestation to the uh, other islands. Uh, in the night, so there was ministerial order that was issued uh, for that, for for vessels not to leave uh, by uh, around 4:30 or 
or before dusk. Uh, so if uh, yeah, so they they they, they uh, and if uh, for those uh, that uh, or that, that the rest to overnight and, and then uh, depart the next uh, next morning during the day. And they also had the, uh, a memorandum of understanding with the, the maritime regulator uh, to work closely with them uh, to, to enforce this. Uh, and they also uh, developed the SOP, uh, the standard operating uh, guidelines to, to manage uh, that operation. Uh, and the, the operation is ongoing at the moment. Okay, just, uh, yeah, next, next slide. So from this uh, operation, uh, they were able to uh, inspect uh, around uh, 47 domestic vessels uh, that were especially the bigger ones. Uh, and from those vessels, they were able to uh, intercept 20 uh, beetles, uh, seven males, 13 females. So for the females, uh, you expect around 100 uh, eggs that uh, one, one can potentially lay so from the 13 yeah you expect and if they do get to another island uh, then they they will uh, build up quickly uh, and also uh, they had numerous uh, potted plants that were uh, those were that were deemed to be uh, potential uh, breeding um, sites for the beetles were, uh, were confiscated and destroyed uh, and uh, yeah for them for Vanuatu the two of the islands uh, are mainly the coconut growing islands. So uh, with the, this effort, uh, they managed to keep the beetle out of those two islands at the moment. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, the other thing I just wanted to also highlight briefly uh, is this is uh, Vanuatu's own initiative uh, where they came, came up with uh, the case for beetle initiative. Uh, and uh, where people were able to collect uh, beetles. Uh, this went on for uh, yeah, only four months and people were able to collect beetles uh, and, and then come and weigh them and the, uh, the ministry uh, pay uh, them for, for the beetles they collect uh, and then destroy them. Uh, so within that uh, period of time, uh, they, they were able to collect almost, uh, yeah, more than 15,000 or more than 16,000. Um, yeah, it was more than, more than 18,000, close to 20,000 uh, beetles they were able to, uh, to collect and destroy. Uh, the only uh, uh, concern with this operation was uh, people deliberately breeding the beetles for, uh, for sale. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of awareness uh, going out that they needed to collect from the wild. Uh, and then come to sell uh, for, for, for cash. Okay, next uh, uh, slide, please. Uh, okay, that one, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to highlight a bit also on uh, other management uh, options that uh, are available. Uh, as I indicated earlier, the virus is one of the main ones uh, that has been working well for, uh, for the CRB. As, as a classical biological control agent, uh, but it is resistant to CLDG. So uh, our collaborator Egg Research in New Zealand is uh, leading uh, this work to try and evaluate uh, other virus strains uh, that can be able to con uh, control the, the, the CLDG uh, haplotype. Uh, and also uh, in terms of insecticide, uh, as much as possible, we want to keep away from uh, insecticide use uh, because I think one of our, uh, our earlier presenters uh, indicated that uh, people live with coconuts. Uh, so uh, that's our main concern. Uh, and uh, if we are to use insecticide, then there has, there has to be a lot of uh, that monitoring that needs to be done, particularly uh, on the mature palms, if you are to go down the line of uh, targeted trunk injection. Uh, but uh, what what we yeah uh, what can also be done is uh, on a, on a younger palms, uh, they can also be able to use uh, contact insecticide uh, to to apply and control uh, the beetle. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, just some photographs here. Uh, 
just uh, it's still early days for us, uh, but particularly for the efforts that we put into Vanuatu, uh, we have uh, seen some uh, recovery on the palms. Uh, so we we will continue with the program, uh, and hopefully we can be able to contain the beetle uh, and get the palms to back, uh, back to where they used to be. Okay, yeah, the last, uh, yeah, the next uh, slide is just on the challenges. I think uh, the COVID-19, uh, yeah, that's the major challenge that everyone around the world uh, encountered. Uh, and for us, it delayed our project by two years. So uh, and within that period, uh, the VTOL continued to spread and then caused a lot of damage to uh, the, the coconut. Uh, and also uh, our region is uh, prone to natural disasters. So uh, we were disturbed by uh, natural disasters uh, that include cyclones, earthquakes, uh, and volcanoes. Uh, and also uh, the other challenge we face is the opposition to uh, biosecurity uh, enforcement programs. Uh, one of the example is the, uh, the vessel operators in Vanuatu when the uh, uh, when the enforcement was uh, put in place, uh, there was a lot of uh, opposition uh, from uh, uh, the private vessel operators, but uh, they eventually, with a lot of awareness and a lot of uh, communication, uh, they were able to understand the importance of the program uh, and, and, uh, and, and supported it. Uh, and also in some uh, places, we have vandalism stolen. and uh, of management materials that becomes a challenge to us as well. So just in terms of the conclusion, uh, I think uh, we've learned from our, our programs that sanitation is the critical element uh, that reduces the population pressure. Uh, so if we keep at it, uh, we can significantly uh, reduce the population. Uh, the only other thing is sanitation is uh, quite labor intensive uh, and it's also an ex expensive exercise. So we just need to be mindful of that uh, and uh, consistency in pheromone trapping and uh, artificial breeding site checks. Uh, that's that's uh, critical. Uh, and also the internal quarantine is critical for prevention of feather, uh, especially uh, we are uh, we are a region of uh, scattered islands, so uh, we need to prevent uh, the spread of the, the beetle to uh, our other outer islands through uh, internal uh, quarantine efforts. And I think uh, that's basically it uh, from my end, Alison. Fantastic presentation, really liked it. Um, we've had three really great presentations. Uh, really uh, useful to see that how critical the biosecurity enforcement program and those uh, management strategies in the field and the sanitation, um, how important it is and how you're really developing sort of a comprehensive response there. Um, really very good and, and interesting. And um, I'm sure we're going to have some questions, which I'm going to look at soon. I've got a quick question around uh, CRB. For example, that, that vessel uh, program, the biosecurity sort of stopping vessels leaving at night, for example, and then investigating if they've got uh, potential risky things on board. Um, and I think you they destroyed 20 coconut rhinoceros beetle. They, they found 20 of them. Is How many do you think, though, that there could be on a vessel? I mean, is 20, do you think it would only be 20? Or do you think you could... How many do you think can escape in those sorts of yeah, programs? Yeah, uh, okay. The, the the twenty were from different vessels. Uh, so okay. if yeah, they, they they were from different vessels. Uh, so what 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 they do is uh, with this operation, uh, before the vessel leaves, they have a, an initial uh, inspection, uh, and then uh, if they are to overnight. Uh, then they ask them to put their lights off. Uh, but if on the vessels that uh, they have the lights on, uh, they also have uh, night operations uh, where the team also inspects the vessels and makes sure there are no beetles gathered around the, around the boat. 
uh, so they uh, and then in the morning before the vessels uh, leave, they also do the inspection. Uh, so if you look at the numbers, if no inspection was done, then uh, uh, you would have more more beetles getting out to the because uh, you would have more vessels that would be uh, would be living uh, living the, the manual for for the other islands. So you yeah. would you would uh, end up getting more more beetles uh, moving out. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Mark. Yes, it's just so important because as we've seen with the black headed caterpillar and and also our red palm wiggle, uh, that spread through trade is just the main mm -hmm. route. So really nice to see the important work you're putting in there. And I think it's a really good example for others um, that are listening today. I've got a question here around, does the rhinoceros beetle have the flight capability to cross to a nearby island or could it fly to some of these islands and around... Okay. Yeah. If you are, uh, if the, the 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 island is is close by, then they can they can fly. Uh, but in terms of the flight information, uh, I think there was some some uh, studies done. I'm thinking, yeah. It could fly around about almost 100 uh, yeah, meters. Uh, yep. So if the island is much, much close by, then you can't, it, they, they can't uh, get to fly. Uh, but if it's uh, they're feather out, then they need to, uh, obviously they'll need uh, another substrate to get on and then get into onto yeah. the, the island. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Here's yeah. a question here. What could be the reason for them to shift to other crops such as pineapple or pawpaw? Is it due to a lack of coconut trees, palm fronds, crowns for the adults to feed on? Yeah, from what uh, we've observed, especially on the pineapples, uh, that's my gut feeling. Uh, looks like uh, as soon as the, the palms, most of the palms, Within the, the 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 established area are the, uh, are, are damaged, uh, then uh, they get on to other alternative crops to feed on. So it's it's mainly the adults that are getting into the other crops to feed. Uh, so yeah, it will mainly have to be shortage of the 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 the, the, the main source of food. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and and uh, uh, sorry, go. No, I was just going to add uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, population, high population pressure as well. Pressure as well. If you have a uh, lot more beetles within an area, then uh, the others start getting into other, other food crops. Yep, yep. Okay, good point. Just uh, one more question. You've got lots of questions. And also, people can actually, you can actually jump into the questions yourself and answer questions if you're an expert. Because I know that 50% of this room know quite a bit about coconut rhinoceros beetle when we did our poll at the start. So if you know a bit about it and you're working on it, feel free to answer some of the questions yourself. Uh, Francis, I know from the Solomon Islands, hello from uh, the MPPO there. We really need to develop and improve a harmonised or harmonised phytosanitary measures to safeguard or safe, yeah, safeguard our borders. And that's definitely the work that's happening in the Pacific. But even more so, we've got to be very, very careful. Harmonisation is really important. And that's why we're having this webinar. I think it's a great example where we're seeing um, the opportunities maybe to look between those borders between within Southeast Asia and Asia and the Pacific. So thanks for that comment, Francis.